Hello everybody, this is Bale and welcome to Evil Dead the game. This is a 4 vs 1 asymmetrical horror game featuring some of the best dark witticism and brutal combat known to the Evil Dead franchise. A team of four survivors from all branches of the Evil Dead franchise must band together and defeat the Kandarian demon before it can destroy the world. In this match, I will be playing as a Kandarian demon, specifically the Puppeteer. The Puppeteer is a demon whose greatest strength is possession, either through controlling his army or the minds of the heroic survivors. I'll let this match play out and mix in commentary at specific points to really give you a feel for how a game plays out. Now when the match starts as the Kandarian demon, you don't have a physical form. You're able to move around at a very high speed in order to collect energy you need to perform various evil actions. As the Kandarian demon, you are the power roll. You need to prevent the survivors from collecting three pieces of a map, which will then lead them towards the pages of the Necronomicon and the Kandarian dagger that they need to banish you from the world. Now at this point in the video, the survivors have already found one of the thirds of the map, so I'm kind of behind. Now, there are a few things that you need to know when playing as a Kandarian Demon. When you start out, you are very weak. You don't have any levels. You need to find ways to collect levels, either through setting traps or attacking survivors. Now, I don't know where the survivors are right now, but I do know where the dagger and the pages of the Necronomicon are. So I'm going to go to those different locations and start setting up traps that will increase the survivors' fear levels. When the survivors reach a certain fear level, I'll be able to possess them, meaning that I can turn them against each other and use their ammunition and make them damage each other. It's a whole lot of fun. But right now, like I said, I don't know where the survivors are, so I'm just getting set up, basically. These red orbs that you see me float over occasionally are ways for me to build up my infernal energy. If you look at the bar underneath my name tag at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much infernal energy I have. You need a certain amount of infernal energy to perform certain like tasks, like possessing monsters, setting traps, etc, etc. So, when you're progressing through the map trying to find survivors and setting up your traps, you need to collect as much of this red energy as possible. Okay, so at this point in the match, there are a few things that need to be taken into account. A few minutes have passed, and I have not found a single survivor. On top of that, the survivors managed to find the second piece of the map. Now, this tells me two things. One, the survivors are not using a car to get around. If the survivors were using a car, they would be revealed to me instantaneously, and I'd be able to rapidly bear down on their position and, you know, hurt them. Now, another thing that's important to remember is that because they don't have a car, they're not getting around the map very fast. This map is very large, so they might have found two map pieces really quickly, but if they're not using a car to get around, then the odds of them finding the third map piece before, like, the I'd say the 15-minute mark are going to be really low. As time passes, I become much stronger, and the fact that they're not using a car means that they're not going to be able to get to the map pieces and end the game quickly. At this point, I was able to find them because one of their players made a bunch of noise, and it was able to alert me to their position. So I'll let this play out and show you how combat kind of works in the game. Alright, so let's dissect a little what happened there. It's important to know that the survivors have two bars, their health bar and their fear bar. The fear bar is on the bottom and their health bar is on the top. Get their health to zero, they get knocked down, and they bleed out. If you get their fear level really high, like I said, you're able to possess them. Now, as the puppeteer, I gain lots of abilities while possessing people, whether it be monsters or survivors, like I said. My special character power is that when I possess a creature, it doesn't take a flat amount of like infernal energy to possess them. This means that I can stay as the uh, possessed creature for even longer. It also means that the creature that I possessed um, deals more damage and has more health. So I'm, at this point, I'm just kind of harassing the survivors. I'm trying to build up their fear while also building up my levels. 
Like I said earlier, building up your levels requires you to attack survivors and make them step in traps. So the more the more you're able to do that, the faster you the faster you'll become stronger and the more capable you are of killing the survivors. It's also good to mention that I be I unlocked like my super unit at level ten. His name is I think it's Gyalos. He's basically like a super powerful lightning demon that allows me to kind of take control of the battle. So you'll be able to see him once I hit level 10, but until then I need to keep harassing these survivors. Locate their souls and swallow at will. Alright, so the survivors are currently gathered around a campfire, and they're not there to sing campfire songs and talk about their day. They're there to lower their fear level. When you stand around a campfire or any significant source of light as a survivor, your fear level starts to go down by a lot. Because they're surrounded by a campfire and they're not really able to gain fear right now, I kind of just have to leave them be until they move out of the area. Right here, I was able to catch the survivors off guard by possessing the car they were trying to use to get to the objective. By taking the car and driving off with it, they now have to hoof it towards the objective and look for supplies along the way. So there's multiple iterations of Ash in this game. The Ash that just sort of like flung me out of the body I was in was Ash from Evil Dead 2. His power basically allows him to prevent a possession once every about 60 seconds, so that's why I suddenly got flung out of the body I was controlling. Alright, so now that I've gotten past level 10, I now have access to my super unit. His name is Eligos. I told you a little bit about him earlier. I'm going to wait for these survivors to kind of step in a bunch of traps and end up with a bunch of them kind of injured. And when they do, I will unleash my ultimate power, which is this demon right here. 
Now I'll tell you a little bit about his power. His left click allows him to do a three hit combo that strikes survivors three times directly in front of him. His uh, heavy attack allows him to like attack everybody in the area around him. It's not nothing too special. His first ability, which is number one, allows him to shock all the enemies around him. So it's good if you're kind of surrounded. His second ability, which is bound to his number two key, um, releases like an energy wave in the direction in front of him. It's a good ranged attack. And then his number three key grabs a target enemy and shocks them for a brief second like you see right here. As you can see, I got three of the survivors down. I'm just chasing this one around trying to finish him off. And there you have it, that's a match of Evil Dead. This is just kind of a bite-sized little portion of the game that I wanted to show you, share with you guys because I didn't want to overwhelm too many of you with the like little specifics of everything that has to go on with this game. This game is very detailed and very dynamic and I really love playing as both the survivor and the demon. And I hope to bring more content to you guys very soon. So I hope you all enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.